everyone! I'm Hannah, the museum educator here at the Transcona Museum. Welcome to the second day of the last week of craft with us. Um, this week is Animal Week and today we will be making paper plate flamingos. So for this craft you will need a paper plate, glue, pink or white tissue paper, depending on uh, your preference. Pink construction paper, you could also use white. Uh, you'll need scissors and a pencil, a black marker, and we do have these flamingo head and leg templates available on our Facebook events page, so the same page that you uh, got to this live. Um, yeah, so let's get started. So basically you'll start with your empty paper plate and you're going to be filling it with clumps of tissue paper on the part where you would put your food, not the bottom part, but the indented part. So before we do that, um, we are going to trace the head and the the legs of the flamingo because we have to put the head on before we um, start putting the tissue paper on. So these templates are available like I said on our Facebook events page. Uh, you could freehand it, you could also uh, search up your own head, uh, flamingo head and leg templates, whatever works best for you. So I'm just tracing that. Okay, so I've traced my flamingo head and now I'm going to cut it out. So the reason why I said you could use either uh, pink or white tissue paper, depending on your preference, is because, as many of you probably know, flamingos can be white or pink, and if they're pink, uh, that means they've eaten a lot more shrimp than the white flamingos. Basically, the, um, the chemical in the shrimp, they're called... Uh, carotenoid particles um, are carried in um, not only shrimp but algae and shrimp like critters um, that causes the pinkness that you see in many flamingos so depending on their diet will depend on how pink they are Okay, so I've cut out my flamingo head and I've already started tissue papering um, a paper plate just because it does take a little bit of time. So instead of me sitting here putting all of the tissue paper on it, I'll just show you how to do a few and then uh, my plate will be, be covered so we can move on to the next step. But basically, you're just going to put the end of the flamingo head um, onto the uh, top of the side where you're going to put your uh, tissue paper balls. So you're just going to glue it in there and then we're going to co eventually cover it in tissue paper. You can also place the head on the back and glue it like this, like that, but the thing is the head won't doesn't really stay up by itself. This, uh, putting it like this just gives it a bit more support. So I will glue that on. I'm actually just going to trim it a bit so it can go down farther. 
go. All right, so get our glue. Put lots on there so it sticks. And you can use whatever kind of glue you want. I'm using liquid white glue, but stick glue or hot glue will work as well. All right, and to give it a bit more support, you can kind of glue the neck to the top of the plate. There we go. So, just like this, you have your flamingo head, and it'll stand up better once we have it covered in tissue paper. Okay. All right, so put your um, construction paper to the side for now. We'll, we'll trace out the legs of the flamingo um, after we're done a tissue papering our plate. So take whichever color of tissue paper you prefer and um, rip off a medium sized chunk of tissue paper. I would say probably about this big. Um, you, the smaller you do your tissue paper chunks, the more tissue, pa tissue paper you'll end up using to cover your plate. Uh, the bigger they are, the less tissue paper um, you'll need to cover your plate. So it depends on how long you want to take to do this, how intricate you want it to be, and how much tissue paper you have available to you. So basically once you crumple it up, you're just going to glue the bottom or whichever end of your tissue paper and just stick it on your plate and make sure all the gaps are covered and you're just going to continue doing that. So it's just a matter of ripping with however big you want your pieces, crumpling them up, putting some glue on, and sticking them on like that. The reason why we're making um, flamingos today for Animal Week is because flamingos are actually the mascot of Transcona and I'm sure if you, um, even if you're not from Transcona and you just live um, other places in Winnipeg or in Manitoba, a lot of people associate um, Transcona with flamingos. Um, I just heard on the radio this morning the um, the um, radio people talking about Transcona and they mentioned uh, flamingos right away. So many people have that association. But the reason why that association exists is because um, in the 1960s, Dr. Murdoch McKay, who was the town doctor for a very long time, from like the 1920s to the 1960s, um, that's why there's a high school here in Transcona named after him, he went on a vacation to Florida and apparently brought a flamingo back. And this was also during the time of the kind of flamingos on your front lawn uh, trend. Um, in the 1960s. It's still a thing today. I know a lot of people who do it for birthdays and I'm sure you've seen them around, but it was m more of a common thing um, in the 1960s. So that really caught on for people. And um, apparently it was this kind of having flamingos as um, Transcona's mascot was solidified in 1980 when they chose the flamingo to represent the 75th anniversary of Transcona and apparently they even painted um, the curbs and sidewalks pink um, during this uh, 75th anniversary of Transcona so that when people thought of Transcona they thought of the color pink which is funny. If any of you know if that actually happened I'd love to know. <laughs> I'm just gotta do this side, so I'll just use a couple more pieces. We have two 
um, little flamingos uh, named Indigo and Einstein here at the museum. You may have uh, seen them before on our Instagram. Um, one's blue and one's pink and right now they're on display uh, in our one of our exhibit cases. So if you'd like to come see them, I'm sure they would love to see you. Um, they've kind of been all around Transcona. They've taken a lot of photo shoots at the museum. They're our own little mascots. So here I have my um, our paper plate covered in pink tissue paper. You could use white, you could use pink, whatever you'd like. The head is on. So the next step, we'll stick with what needs to be done to the head before we move on to the legs. Uh, you're basically just going to color in the beak. Um, I, in my example here, I have a white flamingo as my example. I just colored in the beak black. Um, you can color it in orange. Uh, you can leave it as you want. It's really up to you. But I'm also going to color it in black. So, I'll just quickly color that. Probably a lot of the flamingos, if you've ever seen a flamingo in real life, probably has an orange beak. Um, but just because we're using pink construction paper, um, the orange might not show up as well. So if you're maybe you're using another color of uh, construction paper, maybe white construction paper, definitely you can use orange and it'll show up a lot more vibrantly. So now that we've colored in our beak, we're going to take our googly eyes. I'm just going to take one to put on my flamingo as, this is kind of a side profile of a flamingo, I guess, so I'm going to use one googly eye. So I'm just going to take my glue, glue the back of my googly eye. And I'll just stick it right on. There we go. So while we let the googly eye dry so that it doesn't fall off, uh, it's time to trace the legs of the flamingo and then cut them out and glue them on. So I'll just move my flamingo to the side right now. Once again, if you uh, would rather not freehand your um, flamingo leg or find your own template. These, uh, this template is available on the Facebook events page on our Facebook. All right, so I'm just gonna use the scraps that I have just so I'm not wasting paper. And I'm just going to trace the flamingo leg. I'll trace it twice, obviously, because my flamingo you can have a flamingo that has one leg because flamingos sometimes stand on their one leg. So you could do that if you'd like. I'm going to put two legs on it. All right, flip it around and trace the other. Now that I have my flamingo legs traced, I'm just going to cut them out. On many of the murals in Transcona, there's flamingos featured in them. There's one uh, just, I'm not sure, uh, oh, it's on Bond Printing. The mural on Bond Printing has a flamingo in it. 
Um, and that one's a bit abstract, so you kind of have to really look at the mural to see what you can find in it. The flamingo is definitely the focal point of the whole mural, but there are lots of other um, animals in it as well. So once you finish tracing and cutting out your flamingo legs, all that's left is to glue them on your flamingo. So you're going to glue them onto the back side, the side that doesn't have tissue paper on it, and you can glue them however you'd like. So you could glue them so that they go in opposite directions like this. You could glue them so that they even cross like this. Um, they could be facing the same way. It's completely up to you. I'm going to be doing, uh, gluing them so that they point in opposite directions. All right. Okay. Uh, I would suggest putting quite a bit of glue on them just so that they don't fall off. And you can kind of glue them to the curve of the plate as well. That'll help them stand up on their own or not flop, I guess. Okay. Alright, so once you have your legs glued on, there you have your paper plate flamingo. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Craft With Us. Um, on Friday is our last day of Craft With Us. Um, we'll be making um, bison hand paintings. So if you're interested in that, definitely join along. I'll be doing the live at 10 a.m. instead of 2 p.m. So keep that in mind. The Facebook live will be at 10 a.m., not 2 p.m. Uh, thank you so much for joining me to make uh, my paper plate flamingo. Uh, thank you so much and have a great day.